So one element of the Fallout series that I really love is the lore and the sort of backstory in the kind of universe that is within the Fallout series. And one aspect of the lore that I find kind of interesting is that in the alternate future of the game, of the series, the United States annexes Canada and brutally oppresses the Canadians and they justify this through pacification. And I've always found it very interesting the idea of the United States conquering or invading Canada because as a nation that's distinct from the United States, there's more similarities that we have between the United States and Canada than there are differences. Now, what's interesting is that most Canadians distinguish themselves from the United States through their political culture. JJ McCullough actually made a video, which I'll link in the description below, about left-wing nationalism that exists in Canada, which is basically anti-Americanism. And this is one way of many other things. Also, there's cultural, religious, ethnic differences that uh, Canadians will say really is why Canada is very much distinct from the United States. Now, you can go on and on about these sort of issues, but I wanted to sort of kind of look into this idea of the sort of rivalry between the United States and Canada because historically Canada actually had been invaded by the United States. The United States actually invaded Canada during the American Revolutionary War and more prominently during the War of 1812. Now, I will be reading from the How the U.S. Forces Failed to Conquer Canada 200 Years Ago history page that I will link in the description below as I'm going to be reading the information from here. The United States' first foray into Canada occurred at the beginning of the American Revolutionary War, when colonial troops marched all the way to Quebec City before being repelled. By the time of the War of 1812 rolled around, almost four decades later, the so-called Warhawk members of Congress were clamoring for a second go-around. There were even few calls for part or all of Canada, then a British colony, to be annexed. In June 1812, the United States declared war on Great Britain, citing amongst its grievances the practices of removing sailors from American merchant ships and forcing them to serve in the British Navy. The United States also took issue with a system of blockades and licenses designed to halt trade with Napoleonic France. Almost immediately thereafter, U.S. President James Madison approved a three-pronged assault against Canada. Many Americans believed the invasion would be a cakewalk, particularly since Britain was so distracted by the Napoleonic Wars in Europe. U.S. General William Hull assembled a force of about 2,000 men and led them to Detroit, the jumping off point for an intended assault on nearby Fort Malden in Upper Canada. The British found out about his plans. To make matters worse for Hull, about 200 Ohio militiamen refused to go beyond American territory. The general ne nonetheless remained confident. On July 12, 1812, he took his men across the Detroit River and into Canada where he immediately issued a written pro proclamation telling inhabitants that they would be, and quote, be emancipated from tyranny and oppression. Hall briefly laid siege to Fort Malden, but soon withdrew after warriors under the leadership of Shawnee Chief Tecumseh intercepted his supply train. British commander Isaac Brooke then chased the Americans back across the river and began launching cannon fire at Fort Detroit, from the Canadian side. Brooke arranged for a bogus document to reach the Americans that told of large numbers of Native Americans approaching Detroit. He also mentioned to Hall that he would be unable to control his Native American allies once the fighting started. An intimidated Hull ended up surrendering his entire army and the city that August. At around the same time, the British captured Fort Dearborn in present-day Chicago along with the American outposts on Mackinac Island between Lake Huron and Lake Michigan. Hall was later court-martialed and convicted of cowardice and neglect of duty. Further east, U.S. General Stephen Van Rensselaer, I hope I'm saying that correctly, prepared on October 11th an assault on Quinston Heights, located on the Canadian side of the Niagara River. But 950 U.S. troops were driven down from the heights 
and captured after a group of New York militiamen refused to leave American territory and come to their aid. Roughly 300 Americans were killed or wounded in the battle, while the British suffered some 100 casualties. In the third prong of the attack, U.S. General Henry Dearborn marched with at least 6,000 troops that November from Albany to Plattsburgh, New York on the shore of Lake Champlain. Their goal was to capture Montreal, but once again, state militiamen refused to leave the United States. After some minor skirmishes, including one in which Americans accidentally fired on each other in the dark, the force retreated without ever entering Canada. The United States pulled its act together in 1813 with the help of an improved navy, a larger army, new military commanders such as a future president, William Henry Harrison, and more experienced troops. Over the span of a few months, American troops destroyed the British fleet on Lake Erie, it took over strategically important Fort George near the mouth of the Niagara River, and reclaimed Detroit on their way toward winning the Battle of the Thames with a bold cavalry charge. The Americans also captured York near Toronto and burned several government buildings there. A failed campaign against Montreal turned the tide again, however, and by December, the British had pushed the Americans back across the Niagara River. The United States would go on to win important victories at New Orleans, Baltimore, and Lake Champlain. But the last of its troops left Canada in 1814 after evacuating and blowing up Fort Erie. A peace treaty signed the following month stipulated that all land captured by either side would be returned. And that was sort of the end of the sort of disastrous war, disastrous campaigns that occurred during the War of 1812. The War of 1812, in a sense, was sort of a useless war as both sides, British and American, both claimed victorious in the end, but nothing much was ever gained that much from the war. Now, there have been movements uh, that were trying to push forward the idea of the annexation of Canada to the United States. There's actually a whole Wikipedia page that I highly recommend you guys check out, and I will leave a link in the description below of this page as there have been movements by many weirdos, by many cranks, who really wanted to kind of absorb Canada as sort of the f new 51st state in a way. But other than that, I mean, our relationship with Canada is the best it's ever been for a long period of time. There's really not that much of grievances or grudges that are held against each other. And through our trade agreements and f through the fact that here in North America, Canada and the United States are basically combined or are a very strong power. For the fact that we don't really have that much of an external threat, China is not much of a threat to us and Russia is not much of a threat to us. They do pose a nuclear threat to us, but there's no really conceivable way of them invading the United States ever. And I don't think it will ever happen in Canada anytime soon. But what's interesting about this idea of Canada being invaded is that in the future, as climate change will continue to progress and as resources will be depleted, there might be, be a point in time where the United States might rethink its sort of relationship with Canada. And also the fact that Canada has grown increasingly very much anti-American has sort of gotten people to think well how is our relationship going to be looking forward into the future would Canada just outright just say that they're so distinct from the United States and will the United States demanding more resources need to invade their country remember Canada has a lot of resources the vast Athabasca oil sands gives Canada the world's third largest reserves of oil after Saudi Arabia and Venezuela, according to the USGS. Canada is also one of the world's largest suppliers of agricultural products, particularly wheat and other grains. Another thing too that has to be considered is that when you look at the demographic information about Canada, most of the people live in either Ontario, Quebec, or near Vancouver. And there is a sort of divide that ex also exists in the United States of urban versus rural. You have much of Canada's rural provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and many of the territories that see themselves as sort of distinct from the rest of Canada and don't hold Canada's sort of left-wing or liberal views. Remember, Canada is described as a full democracy with a tradition of liberalism and egalitarian moderate political ideology. 
It has an emphasis on social justice and has been a distinguishing element of Canada's political culture. Because of that, Canada has tend to always be sort of left or will promote very leftist views at times or leftist politics. Well, in contrast with the United States, that is. So what we would consider leftist, they would probably consider moderate within Canada. But the rest of the country, though, especially like the territories that I have stated of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, they're more conservative and they feel like they could break off from the rest of Canada. There's actually a video from one YouTuber that I actually would recommend watching. I forgot the name of the video, but here it is on the screen and I'll link the video in the description below. But what do you guys think? Do you think there's ever a chance that in the future, the United States demanding more resources would try to invade Canada, try to take over? Or do you think that Canada in the future will continue to be on its own as a power and not become subdivided or broken apart as there's going to be sort of an urban rural divide between conservatives and liberals within that country? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching this video as I hope this was informative and somewhat educational. And like always, thank you for everything because I really appreciate when people like and subscribe to my channel. I truly do. And have a wonderful day.